fixed effect model or we call it as fixed effect panel data model okay popular ones fixed effect panel data model so what it does is it treats the unobserved individual heterogeneity we talked about unobserved individual heterogeneity in the last slide right and when it denoting is alpha i, so we had denoted as ci. Let's not confuse with the notations. The same, right? We're just changing the notations, okay? Uh, so it's alpha i in this case. For, so we'll not confuse with, with the alpha i, which is uh, the intercept here, right? So let's not confuse with that. We'll keep on using a, a alpha i for on, on uh, the individual heterogeneity. So we assume here is that the unobserved heterogeneity for each employee to be correlated with the explanatory variable or the independent variables. Okay, so that's an assumption. So we say that alpha i is very correlated with xi or xit. Okay, so the correlation between uh, alpha i, which is the individual heterogeneity is with the independent variables is non-zero now this is an assumption okay if this happens we will be using fixed effect model now the, the obvious questions is like how do you know this is there right we'll see how do we know that this is zero or non-zero and what if it is zero okay we'll see that later so uh, the estimation involves transformation to remove the unobserved effect, pretty much like the uh, you know the first difference uh, estimation type. Here also we are going to uh, get rid of the alpha i term, the unobserved effect, before doing the estimation. But there are other things as well. We'll not go get into the details of the theory. Uh, you can always uh, get into the details of the theory on your own. Since this is an introduction, I'll I'll show more about. Uh, you know the application of these things and and i'll talk briefly about the theory of course this is very complicated uh, theoretical uh, topic which needs to be studied in great detail i'm just giving you an introduction so fixed effect transformation will look something like this the original model is yit and then we have got uh, you know the unobserved effect let's ignore the intercept for the moment and then we have got uh, the you know the slope coefficient beta and then we have got independent variables and the error term when we average it right uh, average it over time we'll get rid of time component right i have told you uh, previously also if you have you know data for time t1 t2 t3 up to t7 you average it you get only one value right and that doesn't have time right so yt, yt minus 1, yt minus 2, it could be 1 to minus 7 because they've got 7 data points for 7 time periods. If you average, take the average, you will have only one data, right? y bar, which is which denotes the average. And it doesn't have uh, t component. It only has the cross-section component i. So we have averaged it out over time. Now we subtract. Okay. Now we subtract these two equations. So the initial, the first equation, and the second one, which is the average of the first equation. Okay. Remember the difference. The difference is that here we have only cross section because it's an average over time. So we've got rid of the uh, time component, and here it has pure panel data. Okay. So when you take the difference of that, you will get certain kind of equation which is used for fixed effect estimation. Okay, the interesting thing is that you know when you take the difference, the unobserved effect alpha i will get cancelled, right? When you take the difference, it is going to be zero. Alpha i minus alpha i is zero, of course. So that is totally out of question, uh, out of the equations. Now the estimation will be, uh, you know, possible. So we are getting rid of uh, by eliminating the alpha i in this case. And the LH side is known as the time demean y. Okay, so these are technical terms that you need to remember. Time demand is nothing but, you know, getting rid of time. So technically, we call it as time demand. Similarly, we are also getting rid of time demand, uh, or we are having time demand x values, independent variables, as well as the error term. 
Now let's apply this concept to our case study, right? That one that we have taken. Now on the time demand data, we can actually use the OLS regression. Okay. Why? Because when you have time demand data, your errors will not be correlated. Correlated over time. Because you have only cross section error i, j, k and so on. So you don't have error like you know uh, u i t u i uh, you know j t and then u i t minus 1 u j t minus 1. So we expect the error, these to be correlated because there is a time component over time right. Like the salary of the same person over time okay salary of the person 1 okay person 1 for time time 1 and salary of the same person in time 2 will most likely to be correlated now since we have got rid of the time component that thing is not going to be there so errors are not going to be correlated over uh, in this particular case so we can use OLS now so by doing this transformation and using OLS we are estimating the equation. So this is all theory, right? So just for your understanding how fixed effect estimation is done, uh, this is this is a broad overview of fixed effect uh, estimation. I recommend you to study more about it, to understand more about it, how it is different from the ordinary least square estimation, how the transformation is actually helping us using ordinary least square estimation while doing the fixed effect uh, estimation model. So let's use it in, uh, for our data set. Syntax remains same that we have been using so far. The model type is now within. Now the fixed effect is also known as within effect. Okay. So fixed effect is same as within effect. Okay. So let's not get confused in this case. Let's look at the results. Now, in the results, we can see that there are two important variables which are significant. One is experience, the other one is projects. As expected, right? these two are very important variables for somebody's salary, right? Uh, so they're coming out of a significant. What about the R square? Now, the R square is 0.65. Adjusted R square is 0.56. Now, that is significantly higher than the R squares that we have seen in the previous three models, right? Why it is so? Because now we are using the correct uh, uh, methodology, right? So if you use the right uh, estimation technique, the right uh, model uh, for the data will have a better R square, a better fit rather. So this is better fit to the data. Previously we were not using, we were using the wrong models for, for panel data. So we weren't using panel data model. So this is the panel data model and that's why we have got the better result. The reason, I mean, if when you are doing in practice, you need not have to try, you know, all three uh, types of estimation that I showed you in the beginning. The reason I showed you is to give, uh, you know, uh, give you, uh, a comparison study, a comparison uh, study as to how OLS is different from uh, the panel data analysis and how we can actually empirically show that the panel data models are better fit to the panel data than the OLS models. So how do we interpret? Now education is dropped, that is fine because education doesn't change over time. When we have taken the average, of course it is not going to be there because education doesn't over change over time for a particular portion most likely so it's it gets dropped experience has a positive effect on log salary and the r square value is pretty good so that shows that it's a good model the next one and the last estimation technique that we will be using which is always um, compared with the fixed effect model is the random effect estimation 
and in panel data analysis you will always be trying either fixed data estimation uh, fixed effect estimation or random effect estimation now the fundamental difference between the fixed uh, effect estimation and random effect estimation is that it assumes that the individual specific effects the unobserved effect i'm talking about the alpha eyes are independent of the regressor okay or the correlation between alpha i and xi is zero in fixed effect we had non zero value in random effect it is zero so that's the fundamental difference between a random effect estimation and the fixed effect and estimation okay uh other than that there are um you know there are uh, other fundamental uh differences as well um especially you know doing the inference uh, whether it's you know doing the inference for population statistics uh, and there will be several questions related to when to use random effect and when to use uh, fixed effect and it's important one and in the last part of this presentation i'll talk about how to decide which one is better right fundamentally we know the assumptions are different but how do we know that the uh, there is that exists correlation between you know the alpha i and xi do you have to do it first before uh, you know deciding on which one is to be used we'll see that so let's use this first we use the uh, you know the statement model equal to random in this case the rest of the syntax remains same and where we're getting here is that uh, experience is significant uh, education is also significant but the r square value is uh, going down yeah it's 42 percent now so previously we used to have 65 percent it has gone down but uh, you know just by looking at the r square we cannot say that which one is is the best model because uh, best model for this particular data we have to verify it statistically so now we have come down come down to two models one is fixed effect model and the one is random effect model and we'll see which one is most suitable for uh, our data which one fits our data the best okay for that we'll do the uh, lm test so lm test uh, is used to decide whether uh, you should uh, you know your your data fits random effects versus the ols okay um you might wonder that we are confused about random effect and uh, fixed effect where we testing with respect to ols we'll see that okay so let's just bear with uh, uh, you know a few more slides we'll 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 have everything in place so listen to me just you know few more minutes and everything will be clear so the lm is used to decide between random effect regression and a simple ordinary least square regression okay and we will be using the plm test function uh, in order to do that the null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference across the cross section unit okay so that's the null hypothesis uh, which implies that the random effect model is inappropriate so if we are in favor of null hypothesis then random effect is uh, inappropriate if we are not in favor of null hypothesis we are in favor of alternative hypothesis then we will see that random effect is appropriate okay when we do this so pool is the result that we have used previously right so we just use that and uh, we are using the function plm test so what we are getting here is that the p value is significant what does that mean so that means that uh, the null hypothesis is not in favor of the ols so what we can uh, infer from this is that given the fact that the p value is less than 0 0.05 with, that means you know it gives us some kind of a significance so null hypothesis <coughs> Uh, you know the importance of null hypothesis uh, uh, you know gives us the confidence that uh, random effect model is better 
against OLS. Okay, so we'll go ahead with random effect model. In Similarly, we can do the LM test uh, to choose between the fixed effect model and the OLS. So previously, uh, we did a comparison. Uh, we did a test to see if fixed uh, random effect is better than uh, OLS. We'll see that for fixed effect as well. Okay, so when we do that, um, the p-value is, is less than 0 0.05 is significant. So we assume that uh, the fixed effect model is performing better than the OLS. Okay. Now the question is, we have found that uh, random effect is also better than OLS. Now how do we decide between fixed effect and random effect?